Today, we're going to be talking about something quite perplexing indeed. Mark Driscoll, if you don't know who that is, was a pastor of a church called Mars Hill in Seattle. It was a super hip church until it was revealed that Mark Driscoll is not the best guy. He's, he's pretty terrible, actually. And uh, he went to this Christian men's conference and saw something he didn't expect to see, which frankly, I don't think any of us would expect to see. A stripper pole, complete with stripper. Male stripper, that is. Uh, so we're going to watch a video about that by a guy called Indie Thinker. That uh, lovely gentleman right here is Indie Thinker. Let's see if he actually has any thoughts. He is himself a Christian, so who knows. Uh, but yeah, let's check it out and see what happened here. Mark Driscoll was recently at the James River Church Men's Conference where he was a guest speaker. And he was quickly kicked off the stage before he even got to speak because he decried what you can see on the screen now, which is... Before he proceeds, let me just point out, it doesn't seem like Mark Driscoll was kicked off the stage before he even got to speak, but we'll get to that in a second. One thing I do want to say right now is, if you hear cracking sometimes, like if you hear the, the volume flare a little bit there, that's not me. This video, this Indie Thinker video, has such terrible audio that like the audio just like randomly spikes and clips hard. I mean, my audio, let's be honest, is not the best. But with a setup like this, you'd kind of expect a little bit better of the audio mixing. So just keep that in mind. It's not me. A young man who, by the way, moonlights as a male stripper that was invited to this conference to what a Chad. do what can only be described as a little bit of a pole dance before he sticks a sword in his mouth, climbs to the top of the pole, slides down, and then stops himself right before he is impaled. Now, you may already be thinking to yourself, why is this at a Christian men's conference? We'll get to that in just a I would be thinking that, but another thing that I'm thinking at the same time is, are these people allergic to anything resembling fun? Because, I don't know, man, that's certainly a stripper pole, let's be honest, and he is a male stripper, but that didn't look too sexual to me. That just looked like, ah, oh, check out this, uh, this athletic stuff, Let's look at this cool athletic stuff. I mean, like, you know, if the guy were doing, like, a strip tease on stage and, and having, like, you know old ministers insert dollars into his pants or whatever, then I think you could be like, ah, oh, well, that's not good. But like in this particular case, it just seems like entertainment. Like, ah, oh, why are they entertaining themselves with this guy? What? What's up with the entertainment here? It is perplexing, but you know, it's just a weird choice. There's nothing like sexual happening here, is there? Just a moment, but I think you should hear Mark's comments about what took place at this conference before the pastor begins to shout at him to get off the stage. Check it out. I've been up since one o'clock in the morning. Holy mother of jump scares, that was loud. The reason I'm hoarse is I have been praying for you and my heart is very burdened for you. Um, Jesus, that's a lot. So, I mean, the first thing I want to say is just like, does this guy to you embody the spirit of Jesus? You know, the guy being like, hey, everybody, don't be like the Pharisees. Pray in private. Pray in your closet. Pray in secret. And Mark Triscoll comes up here on a screen and is just like, uh, so by the way, I've been praying for all of you today because there was a guy on a pole doing gymnastics, which I know is so completely unchristian. It makes me just like want to like die. Um, but also, take note, he is, in fact, uh, on stage. And I want to be very careful with this, and it's not what I want to say, but the Jezebel spirit has already been here. I don't think that was a careful thing to say at all. I don't, do you think he was being, I don't think he was being very careful there. That's pretty harsh. The Jezebel spirit, because a guy was doing gymnastics, like, Jesus, never take this guy to a circus. The Jezebel spirit opened our event. This is a rebuke and a correction of no one. This is an observation. I think it is a rebuke, actually. But also, you gotta love the music under there. Like, the, you know, they got the synth playing under it, like, to make it sound more serious. Like, I mean, it's incredible. Like, these manipulation techniques they use, these manipulation tactics to convert people to the faith and all, they are using that on each other right now at this conference. Isn't that amazing? Before the word of God was opened, there was a platform. It was a high place. On it was a pole. 
an ashram. The same thing that's used in a strip club for women who have the Jezebel spirit to seduce. Oh no, not for women. Ah. Men. In front of that was a man who ripped his shirt off like a woman does in front of a pole at a strip club. Okay, well, you know, men do that too. Uh, there's nothing inherently womanly about just like, you know, ripping off your shirt. I mean, I've seen plenty of men do that. Uh, J.P. Sears, the current conservative golden boy who just shits on trans people all the time, he's opened a lot of videos by just like straight up ripping his shirt off. What's manlier than ripping your shirt off? It's like a display of power. Again, the, the stripper guy, total Chad, Mark Driscoll, virgin. Somebody should do a Chad and virgin like comic using the two of them. I don't know where you'd find out more about the stripper though, but if anybody does, I'd love to see that meme. That man then ascended. See, our God is not arrogant. He doesn't ascend. Our God is humble. He descends. I don't know if that's how that works. I mean, okay, so if I understand the, the Bible story correctly, and I think I have a pretty good grasp of it, uh, what happened to Jesus after his resurrection, after he was done showing his proofs to his followers, which is a perplexing thing to do in itself, what happened to Jesus? Did he live out his natural life and die a natural death? No, he ascended to heaven. That's what happened. Um, but also, what does that have to do with anything? Like, you know, the list of places you can't take Mark Driscoll is growing by the minute. Never, ever take Mark Driscoll rock climbing. And then he swallowed a sword and Jesus cried. Okay, Pastor John, I'll receive that. Thank you. So I I love the mix of like booing and screaming and I gotta say though I think that the pastor should have let him cook he was clearly on to something there he was having a good time he was feeling himself he was moisturized you know he was doing great um, and personally I would have really enjoyed hearing all the like you know multitude of things that nobody should ever take him to do he was about to go on about the sword I mean like you know nobody ever tell him about Zorro the man would have a heart attack. Um, it just goes to show, like, you know, these these tough guy preachers like Mark Driscoll, uh, you know, they're so big and strong, they're big tough boys, but then, like, you know, you put one stripper on the stage and suddenly everything is wrong. Um, the sword thing is really funny, too, though. I mean, like, what was he about to say about the sword? See, this is why the guy should have let him continue. What was he about to say about the sword? I mean, the guy was, what, about to, like, swallow a sword or fall on his sword almost, like, What's the thing about the sword? Is he about to say, like, like our Savior Jesus uh, had a sword in him? Or was he about to say something like, um, like, our Savior has a sword coming from his mouth in the book of Revelation? I don't know what he was going to say. I wish he'd gotten to say it. As I said, the guy should have let him cook. Um, very sad he didn't. I, like Mark Driscoll, have a couple questions. First of all, why is this taking place at a men's conference? This is incredibly gay. And by that, I don't... Oh, whoa there with the hard G. I mean, the way I and my friends used the word gay in high school, uh, because that was kind of a derivative for the word stupid. It is incredibly stupid, so it is gay in that sense, but it's also really kind of gay in the literal sense. Okay, this is Indie Thinker for you. D can't you feel the thoughts happening in Indie Thinker right now? This man has so many thoughts. He's just full of high-minded ideas, isn't he? Why is a man taking his shirt off and then doing this little pole dance for a group of men at a men's conference? I love how, like, the mere existence of trans people and drag queens and queer people as just, like, evangelicals seeing, like, terrible things in their midst all the time. They can't have any fun anymore because the gays might be there. I mean, dude, the guy was not performing a striptease. He was doing gymnastics. Like, that's it. He was just, he was working a pole. But not like strippers do, like somebody at a gymnastics competition does. I mean, I've seen people do stuff like this on the New York City subway. It's really obnoxious and really annoying when they do it, because we're on a, you know, we're on the subway. But like, it was a private event, just some dudes chilling, and wanted to see some cool gymnastics. Now again, 
I do have to question exactly what they were thinking, because obviously, if you have Mark Driscoll, a super fundamentalist weirdo, as one of your speakers, you're probably super fundamentalist too, so you have to imagine other fundamentalists might be totally against having fun at this point in time, because having fun is gay. Not to mention, it's not just a men's conference, it's a Christian men's conference, where men are supposed to be going deeper in God, hearing the Word of God, maybe even repenting a little bit, and reaffirming their faith. I'm not. You know what? He's right. I think at the next one they should do something really Christian and really manly. They should oil each other up and do some workouts together uh, on top of each other. That's what Christian men should be doing at a Christian men's conference. I'm not quite sure why you would put an America's Got Talent sideshow at this conference if you were not trying to do anything other than purely entertain. And quite frankly, I think... Well, yeah, people do want to be entertained. I mean, you can have a Christian men's conference and, like, not have it be 100% about Jesus stuff. People do just want to, like, hang out and have fun and get to know each other. When you're watching, like, a gymnastics thing, yeah, there's not much Jesus in it, but you can, like, meet people, talk to people, say, hey, my name is blah, 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 and I'm with blah, blah, blah. Who are you? We should, uh, we should like, talk about what we're doing with our churches and stuff. And that's what that's about. I mean, these dudes act like uh, Christian churches never have any entertainment. Like, you know, I come from a very Baptist background, super fundamentalist Baptists, and um, believe it or not, they still try to have fun sometimes. What's wrong with having fun? Is that too gay for you, you know, indie thinker? I think that is one of the problems with the modern day megachurch, especially, is that they have forgotten their primary responsibility and they have in very many ways exchanged that for entertainment. They have adopted the bread and circuses mentality of ministry rather than to doing real business with God in a way that truly changes lives. Now, here's the thing. You just talked about uh, mega churches. You know, mega churches being churches that have tens of thousands of people coming every week, tens of thousands of members, maybe even hundreds of thousands of members. Now, the fact that they are mega churches implies they're doing something right. They are Christian organizations which large numbers of people want to attend. Um, so you can critique mega churches all day long. But at a time when other churches are in decline, I mean, look at all the churches closing across America right now, even in small towns like my eastern Kentucky hometown, churches are dwindling. They are closing. Mega churches are pretty much the only thing keeping Christianity afloat right now in any sense, especially in any popular sense. So it's odd for you to attack them when they seem to be doing the work. I mean, like, you and your seven-member uh, legacy church, good for you. I guess, like, you're really holding it down there with the Word of God nobody listens to, except people who already, like, know it. Um, but mega churches they thrive on being able to attract people who aren't normally going to go to church. Now, of course, for my part, I think it's all nonsense. I think this guy's church is nonsense, and so are the mega churches. But I do have to point out, the mega churches are successful for a reason. They're not just like big entertainment shows. They are still Christian organizations. They still have preaching. They still have gospel music. They still have this Jesus-y stuff. Um, it is not just entertainment. It's still religion, no matter like how mad that makes you, uh, quote-unquote thinker. Uh, you can say what you want to about Mark Driscoll and his past, but I happen to think he's... And oh, can you say a lot about it? exactly right here. I think if we weren't so desensitized to the way in which culture has crept into the church, we might actually have a problem with this. And perhaps the biggest problem comes because we are presently living in a post-Christian age where more and more people are leaving the church. Now, Man, you know, the truth, the truth of what is going on here is like right in front of these people's eyes, but they just, they can't pull it all together. Yes, religion is in decline, and it's not in decline because of mega churches, which are actually doing pretty well. It's in decline in part because of people like this and Mark Driscoll, who on the one hand say that, you know, you can't, you can't have gymnastics at a men's conference, and then on the other hand say, well, you know, I just happen to love Donald Trump. I just... I adore Don. I would kiss Donald Trump right on the lips if I could. Like, you know, this is a big problem uh, for y'all. You know, you're hypocrites. You see, you're not, you're not helping at all with this image of Christians and especially fundamentalists as being hypocrites. I don't know if this guy is actually a fundamentalist. He has said positive things about Catholicism, so maybe he's a Catholic. I don't know, and I don't care. It's all the same to me. 
But my point is just, you know, you, you are the problem, okay? Uh, the mega churches can pull people in more than people like you or Mark Driscoll because the mega churches at least make room for everybody, whereas the Christian churches who are not like mega churches, the fundamentalist church, the super fundamentalist churches, they're not making room for anybody but people who already agree with them on everything already. Um, to be in one of those small, you know, southern churches, you pretty much have to be a Trump-loving Republican. There's no room for, like, Democrats in those churches, for example. Uh, you just, you gotta hate gay people and love Donald Trump. That's what's killing your churches, dude. That's what's killing your religion, at least in my opinion. Now, you may disagree, but if the mega churches are prospering uh, because they have this, in your opinion, hollowed out version of Christianity with like entertainment and stuff, and your version of Christianity is dying, I think that says a lot about who society views as being more correct, more up to date. Uh, entertainment in churches, I don't see why that's a bad thing. If you don't evolve with the times, you die out. Um, now, for my part, again, I don't have any dog in this fight. I want to see it all go away. But, like, these criticisms are just the big silly, okay? Now, if you ask a million different people why people are leaving the church, they will all give you different answers, and they will all do it primarily based upon their own personal feelings and beliefs rather than on a statistical basis. But I can tell you, because we try to do here at Indie Thinker, and at least I try to personally, uh, think about things from an objective basis. And the... You mean like uh, virgin births and the dead coming back to life after three days dead? You know, that sort of like objective stuff? Yeah, I'm sure you do, my guy. Uh, but again, you know, the numbers speak for themselves. I mean, this guy wouldn't be complaining so much about mega churches were it not that churches like his are dying out. It's right in front of your face. You don't need statistics to see that, like, your part of the religion is in decline. Now, granted, evangelicals have been hit less hard, and so have Catholics, than the mainstream, uh, you know, is that what they're called? Uh, main, mainline denominations. That's true. But all the denominations of Christianity have been hit. And yeah, you gotta wonder why. I mean, a lot of it's gonna be politics. Uh, a lot of it's gonna come down to politics. A lot of it's gonna come down to, like, philosophies. Um, the times, they are changing. And we don't, we don't have to, by we, I mean like anybody interested in this subject, we don't have to have statistics on exactly what's happening here to realize that people like this feel under threat. So what is it that's causing them to be under threat? Well, the things they talk about seeping into the church, those are the things that are obviously uh, taking away from them. Those are the things they're losing to. We can tell what you're losing to by the things you talk about. Do you realize that? Do you know that? The statistics are pretty clear here. The vast majority of people who do not go to church or do not believe in God refuse to do so simply because they have never been given a good reason to go to church. Or in other words, they don't believe that they've been given evidence for the existence of God. Now, I well, that's because there is none. There, there is no evidence. I mean, geez, I come from a Christian background. I could tell you, I've never seen a shred of evidence. So there's that. But well, I don't know where we're going with this. This is getting interesting. This isn't about Mark Driscoll anymore, I guess. But this is this is transition to being about mega churches and the decline of Christianity. Uh, so let's see where he, let's see where he goes with this one. I'm interested. How about you? I can't help but think that what we just saw is part of the reason why people do not find that evidence when they come to church because they find simply what they can find because they're sick of people like mark driscoll yeah i agree a lot of people are sick of people like mark driscoll find in the world if all we have to offer is a worse version of america's got talent then why in the world would anybody come to church it is clear that the church has a simple role they are supposed to declare the word of god authoritatively they are supposed to even i know crazy provide worship experiences where people can corporately come to experience and encounter jesus but rather than do that, very often we have sold out to entertainment rather than to encounters with a true and living God. So, you know, if you really did have access to a true and living God, I don't think you'd have the decline you do, because that's a pretty hard offer to resist right there, isn't it? A true and living God who you can have a personal relationship with. Who's going to turn that down aside from people like me? Most people aren't going to turn that down. If you really had that, I don't think you'd have this problem. But, you know, I just want to, like, point something else out that I just, I had a thought when watching this guy uh, complain. This video actually has two parts. This video is, this is 30 minutes long. I'm not going to watch the whole thing, at least now. This video has two parts. The first part is Mark Driscoll kicked off stage of church conference. 
The second part is, is Christianity dead in America? Now, he spends the second part of this video uh, doing some advanced cope, not the theologian kind, but the, you know, uh, the, not, uh, not theologian, but like, um, what am I thinking? There's another word for it. Ah, whatever. Uh, he doesn't do that, but he does do some advanced cope in a different sort of way by saying like, ah, well, you know, maybe Christianity isn't like dying in America, but you wouldn't be here if you didn't believe that it was. So obviously he does believe that Christianity is in decline in this country, uh, no matter how much he wishes to deny it. And you can see from the look on his face and the looks on all of their faces that they don't know what's happening here or how to deal with it. The simple fact is this. Um, as societies become more advanced and more knowledgeable, uh, they lose the, the impetus to religion. And here's why. Uh, think about, like, you, you know, 2,000 years ago, your child gets sick. And you don't have an explanation for that. You don't you don't know why your child has gotten sick. It could be anything. It could be a witch doctor. Somebody could have cast a spell on your family. Any number of things. The gods could be cursing you. Where do you take your child to when they're sick? Well, if you're in Rome, you probably have Galen. Uh, but if you're not in Rome, if you're just, you know, in the backwoods or something, you, you probably just have uh, the local priest or whatever. Um, that's all you have. You don't have a doctor. Nowadays, we have doctors. So you don't take your, your sick baby to uh, your, your priest or your preacher. You take it to a hospital. And uh, these roles, as they expand, they, they go on to consume everything the church years, used to do. That's, that's one uh, facet of it. Another one is this. Uh, information. So we used to have the gods as explanations for things, why things happen certain ways. Like if there was a bad thunderstorm, well, Zeus was very angry. Uh, you're having problems at sea, well, Poseidon is is very, very not happy with you right now. Uh, stuff like that, you know, Any anything that happened could be blamed on the gods. Nowadays, we know that the gods are not in control of the weather or the universe, or our lives for that matter. We know that we can fight back against these things in nature, in a sense. I mean, if a tornado comes, you can make it. You can you can have a tornado shelter. Um, hurricane comes, well, now you have cars. You can just get out of dodge. You can see the hurricane coming thanks to our advanced technology and get out of the way. If you have cancer, it's not a death sentence. You can go to a doctor and maybe uh, get it removed or get chemo and have it you know, taken care of. So the roles that like the church has played, they're they're declining. They're in decline. In America, it's a little bit harder, and the reason it's a little bit harder is because America still has some vast uh, inequities in our system. You know, one thing I always like to point out is the fact that a lot of these conversion stories of like, ah, I used to be an atheist and now I love Jesus, a lot of these stories, um, the people involved in these stories, they're, they're Americans, and not always, but usually they're Americans, and one of the things they say is, well, I was having a, a hard time, I was doing drugs, I was drinking, I was fornicating, I was having a lot of fun, and it was really awful, and I was sad and depressed about how much fun I was having, and then my, my girlfriend got pregnant, we had sex before marriage, and she got pregnant, and then, like, we didn't know what to do, so we got married, and I started going to church, like, you needed a therapist. What you needed was a therapist. But in America, of course, it can be pretty hard to get a therapist. And in other countries, not so much. Other countries, other Western countries, other Anglosphere countries, you may not be able to get in immediately, and it may not it may not be the best therapy, but you can get in. Uh, in America, that's not the case. Churches very frequently are like a substitute for therapy or rehab or stuff like that. And uh, that's a real shame. And I do think we will fix that at some point. But that is the main reason that more people aren't leaving Christianity at this point. Christianity is being replaced in American life. And it's only a matter of time till it's replaced all the way. I mean, there will always be Christians. There are still Zoroastrians, what, 4,000, 5,000 years later? Uh, so they will always exist. But the decline, even if it stops temporarily or reverses temporarily, it will continue. I think we can point to South Korea for a good example of that. I mean, South Korea has gone in cycles where, like, South Korea, it had become less Christian, and then all of a sudden, I think in, like, the 80s and 90s, uh, instead of secularizing, it became super Christian. And now, once more, Christianity is on the decline again in South Korea. Um, so these things do often go up and down. Maybe it's the case that uh, the decline in religion has stopped for a second. Maybe religion will increase a little bit again, then go back down. But secularization theory uh, has been pretty good at showing what will happen next, especially lately. I mean, there were people who thought that America disproved secularization theory and all that, but no. 
Um, America is now following the same trajectory as countries in Europe, although I'd say it's probably closer to Korea in some way, South Korea in some ways. Uh, so yeah, it's being replaced. Religion is. And people like this, they're just, they're so lost trying to figure out, well, why is this happening to us? They're just, they got so many explanations, but what they really need to do is accept it. Accept that Christianity's role in culture is in decline, and they're not going to have the power they used to have to control things. Right now, they've got a whole political party. They got the Republican Party, they got Donald Trump, they got Christian nationalists galore, but they're not going to have that forever. That's not going to be a thing they keep. Um, they are going to end up with a smaller and smaller portion of society. Now, I'd say the Republican Party will be overwhelmingly Christian for a long time to come. But eventually, the, the decline will hit them, too. I mean, like a lot of people becoming agnostics, atheists, or just nuns in general, that's N-O-N-E-S, uh, will start becoming Republicans. I mean, right now, atheists and agnostics heavily tilt towards Democrats. But I see it being the case that as more and more people become uh, unaffiliated religiously, that uh, they will start to file into the Republican Party as well. Uh, so anyway, that's all I have to say about this video. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope you have a great one.